you go to a library, what do you expect to see? Books, chairs and tables perhaps, and most importantly, plenty of room to study. Well, I'm Claudia, the anthropologist, and when my partners and I studied Thompson Library, we found all of these things and more. We hypothesize that when studying in the library, students prefer about one chair's worth of space, or one and a half feet. We made observations and conducted interviews to validate this hypothesis, and in this video, we will show you what we found. Let's go. Um, like, be quiet. It doesn't really like say anywhere, no, like you shouldn't be loud, but like people are just quiet because it's a library. Are there unwritten rules for how people... Are there rules for where you sit, or are there rules for talking with others? Like, can you talk to other people, or I when think, can you talk to them? Um, I think there's no rules for where you sit. Oh, like how close? Yeah. I think definitely, if you're going to sit at someone's table, always ask them. Never okay. just like take their space. In other words, what are the unwritten rules for how people should behave in the library and interact with others? Don't talk loud and obnoxiously. Don't sit next to me. About how many feet would you ideally have between you and another person while you are working at the library? About 50. <laughs> About 50 feet? Mm -hmm. If you could design and create your own space in the library, what would it look like? How would it be different? Free vending machines. More tables for myself. More study rooms. Is that all? Yeah, no one else is allowed in the library. In the entire library? <laughs> yeah. Where did you grow up? We decided to test how people really react in situations where these social norms are violated.
We grouped the four things that people talked about in their interviews that annoyed them into categories. One, eating. Two, talking. Three, personal contact. And four, spatial, just like putting stuff in their space. So I'm here with the person I, whose space I invaded, and she's going to talk about how that made her feel. So how did you feel about me eating? Um, it was really distracting, especially because you're eating like really close to my face, and I didn't know like what to do about it. Because <laughs> I kind of wanted to like say something, but then I didn't want to be rude. Fair enough. Um, how did you feel about me like touching your stuff and putting my stuff where your stuff was? I didn't even know like what, what like how to react because you literally just like picked up my stuff and like started moving it around. It was kind of like stop. <laughs> When I started talking to you, was that weird? It was annoying, yeah. I was like, no, I don't speak German, and no, I don't have a calculator, and why would I trust you in the first place to fit All right, last one, which is probably the most important one. How did you feel that I picked the seat right next to you instead of one that was a little farther away? I mean, it didn't really bother me that you, like, sat down there, because, like, it's just a library. It's just, like, a place to sit, but, like, once you started, like, encroaching on, like, my, like, personal space, that's when it got weird. Okay, thank you. Yeah. This is this is good morning. Oh my god, there's English words right there. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. I feel stupid. <laughs> Jeremy's not easy. You think English would be easy? Education major? No. Oh, why are you looking at child care stuff? It's your sociology. Okay. Mm -hmm. How did you feel when she sat next to you up there? That made me really uncomfortable. I like didn't know what to do, but I didn't want to be mean. And what about when she started eating food? I just like pretended to ignore it. And when she asked you for help with her homework? I mean, I politely like helped her as I could, but like quickly got onto what I was doing. Okay, thank you. As you can see, our informants all valued their quiet and personal space very dearly. Our informants all cited similar reasons for the cultural rules of the library. The library functions as an academic study space rather than a social outlet. From a functionalist view, the informal rules of Thompson exist to create a respectful learning environment. Through the comparative perspective, we see that expected behaviors in the library are not expected across other cultures. For example, it may not be as appropriate to speak in a whisper when walking down High Street as it is while studying in the library. The holistic perspective takes into account the relationship between parts and the whole, underlining all aspects of humanity. For example, one might consider the biological implications of the intense value on education apparent in the library. One could explore why the human brain obsesses over understanding the world around it, and how we have responded by creating learning institutions. 
The evolutionary perspective takes into account how our biology and environment have changed over time, and in turn how our culture has changed. For example, our cultural shift towards sophisticated technology has changed how students use the library. It has become more and more rare to spot a student utilizing the library without some type of electronic aid in hand. Our study of Thompson Library led us to a functionalist conclusion. The informal rules of the library exist to aid in the overarching purpose of the library. But that doesn't mean it's the only answer. What do you think?